Country News brought to you by Jake's Corner Bar and Grill. Same stop, different horses since 1916. And by Terlucas and Brandt CPA PLLC, with a long history of providing quality CPA services right here in Rim Country. On this Monday, June 21st, the longest day of the year, for Tano TV, K Rim Radio News, and Global Trails Media, I'm Randy Roberson with your Rim Country News headlines. Well, the Backbone Fire, burning out west northwest of Pine and Strawberry, Well, at last report, that was listed at 24,198 acres in size, and there's still no containment. Backbone fire activity has increased to the north and west, moving toward Needle Rock Ranch and State Route 260. Residents of Camp Verde were seeing a large smoke column yesterday afternoon as winds pushed to the south. All aircraft yesterday were being used for perimeter control of that blaze, Their focus was to keep the fire on top of Dead Man Mesa and prevent it from establishing into Hard Scrabble Canyon, as well as uh, crossing the Verde River south of Gap Creek, while resources on the ground put in hand and mechanical lines. Now, State Route 260 is still closed between Camp Verde and State Route 87. And State Route 87 is closed from the north end of Payson all the way up to Clint's Well. Evacuation orders were issued Friday for the communities of Pine and Strawberry and are still in effect today. KRIM's Richard Kerr spoke to Corky Schumacher, who is one of the evacuees staying here in Payson. Schumacher said they went from set status to go status quickly with only about an hour to pack things up and get out. Well, fortunately, we were on the list to be receiving the, the notices from the, uh, from the crew, and they, uh, they notified us it was time to get ready. Um, so we thought, okay, this is a drill, because at that point in time, the sky was blue, everything looked great. And we thought, okay, no big deal. We started throwing things together, and then within an hour, we got, okay, it's time to evacuate. So we... We got the basics and uh, got our dogs and we headed into town and didn't realize there were so many people up there because it was bumper to bumper traffic the whole way in from uh, from Pine to Payson. It took me about an hour, hour and a half just to make that drive. Uh, we have staying with friends at this point in time. We're very thankful for that. And um, Now it's just a matter of wait and see. We don't have any idea at this point in time when we might be able to go back. We are just hoping and praying that we will have a home to go back to, but we trust that the the people who are working the fire at this point in time are doing all that they can. We are so appreciative of that and we are praying for them constantly. On the fire management side of things, Operations Section Chief Jason Coyle said that they've been working to protect the power lines that come up out of the power substation down in Childs, but there have been some challenges in attempting to do so. The Childs substation that's down there, there's three 96 kV lines coming out of there that we've been trying to protect. Um, Unfortunately, today we lost the one that goes up towards uh, Copper Canyon, and so there's only the one that goes up on Ikes that hasn't been burned yet. Um, the positive part about that part of the fire, I guess, if you want to call this, is that the work they did early on in the fire has been able to protect the substation. So restoring that secondary power, especially those of you guys that live down near Beasley Flats and stuff, that, that secondary source of power that goes up into that area is going to be um, easier, a lot easier, if we can maintain the integrity of that substation. That's something that we're working on doing right now. Coyle went on to say the use of scooper planes has become critically important in the fight against this fire. Um, past Brown's Ranch, and I believe it's called the Brown Springs Ranch, which is the one on the, on the west side. You can see a nod over there. And so what we're trying to do there is we're using scoopers. So we have these um, aerial planes that skim across the top of the water and fill up with water. They've been going down to Bartlett. It takes about 10 minutes to get there and then come up there and drop water. They're dropping water along that edge there to make sure it doesn't spot across the Verde River. That's another one of our main objectives, is we want to make sure and keep that fire east of the Verde River. So we met with the Sheriff's Department earlier today and with the Camp Verde Marshal's Office, and you, they pointed out to us about the number of people that have horse property down there, 
um, how difficult some of that access and egress is on the very southern end of the homes just above Beasley Flats. And so, you know, recognizing that that is a real risk to the community there, if fire gets across there, one of our main emphasis is to keep the fire on the east side of the Verde River. We've placed links on KRIMS and Tano TV's Facebook pages where you can click and watch that entire briefing from last night as well as get new updates throughout the day as they come in. In yet other wildfire news, well, dispersed campers up in the area south of Forest Road 231 or Woody Mountain Road and Forest Road 535 and Sycamore Canyon, that's up on top of the rim, well, they were notified to pack up and leave due to a lightning-ignited Raphael fire which started north of Perkinsville and grew significantly yesterday. And taking a look down to our southeast on the Telegraph fire we've been reporting on now for over a week near Globe, well, winds were favorable there and had limited growth yesterday. Firefighters patrolled uh, for fire activity to protect values in Dripping Springs, Wind Spirit, Hagen Ranch, the Slash Esh uh, Ranch, El Capitan, and along State Route 77. The fire continued to back down through pine stands on Pinal Mountain to Forest Service Road 651. The central and northern Arizona chapters of the American Red, Red Cross have closed the High Desert Middle School shelter in Globe. Anyone still needing Red Cross assistance can call 1-800-842-7349 and they'll continue to monitor the telegraph fire and remain on standby to reopen the shelter if requested by the Gila County Office of Emergency Management. Well, coming up in Rim Country weather, uh, temperatures will cool a few degrees today and tomorrow with elevated to near critical fire weather conditions still due to breezy winds. Low storm chances return for Wednesday and Thursday with increased cloud cover and temperatures down to near normal. A complete look at your seven-day Rim Country weather forecast is coming up next. You're watching Rim Country News. Jake's Corner Bar and Grill. It's not just a bar, it's a destination. Jake started out as an Arizona stage stop way back in 1916, and folks have been stopping here ever since. Jake's also has been famous as a popular stopping spot for travelers headed to Rim Country or Roosevelt Lake. But as more people discover this historic stop, more and more, it becomes the destination. It was even featured in the 2008 movie Jake's Corner and later featured at the Sedona Film Festival. Ice cold beers from the tap, imported or specialty beers, a generously stocked full bar and great food that keeps you wanting to come back again and again. Enjoy a game of pool inside or step out and enjoy the covered patio and outdoor bar with live entertainment and much more. We hope to see you soon at one of the most historic stopping spots in Arizona. Jake's Corner Bar and Grill. It's not just a bar, it's a destination. Hi, I'm Michael Dowling with the Old County Inn and Pinewood Tavern. So we've been using True Lucas and Brandt probably for the last four years. They've been really awesome to work with, um, Amy and Marguerite. They do everything now from pretty much all of our payroll needs, pay all of our taxes. They even help us uh, on Fridays to pick up our checks, which is great since they're local. But I pretty much use them for everything. They've been awesome to work with and they take off all the things I don't have to worry about as far as taxes go so I can concentrate on my business. But as for now, they're pretty much doing all of my personal taxes, all of our payroll needs, all of our business taxes and very affordable and just awesome to work with and they're local so we really appreciate them and they've been a great partner with us so far. Well taking a look now at your Rim Country 7 day weather forecast, obviously the huge story around our region right now is the numerous wildfires that have developed over the past several days. Now, weather conditions through tomorrow will not be much help with this situation as it will remain hot and dry with breezy winds each afternoon and evening. Now, there should be at least some increasing cloudiness uh, from uh, coming in from the south tomorrow, which could help just a bit. Now, by later Tuesday night into Wednesday, a more significant moisture increase from the south, well, that's going to lead to mostly cloudy skies and higher chances for some showers and, of course, thunderstorms. Right now, though, rain chances are in the 30 to 40 percent range for the higher elevations with uh, lower chances in down in the valleys. 
cloud cover could keep instability down Wednesday afternoon, which would uh, limit uh, uh, coverage intensity of storms, but this isn't certain at this point. The moisture lingers through Thursday with low storm chances continuing. Friday into the weekend, some uncertainty in the upper air pattern in our region, so only low to moderate confidence in the details thus far. The main feature is likely to be strong upper ridging over the northwest United States with warmer and mainly dry conditions through the weekend for our region. Now, as we get closer to next week, the National Weather Service says easterly flow around this ridge could bring a moisture increase and a return of some storm chances here to rim country. What is called a blended model guidance indicates this with rain chances increasing as early as Sunday over in the eastern parts of Arizona and area-wide by next Monday and beyond. Meanwhile, highs and lows around rim country today, well, according to the National Weather Service out of Flagstaff, it should look something like this. Here in Pace and under sunny skies, we're forecast to hit 96 degrees for a high today, so at least we're down out of triple digits for now. Tonight, after the sun goes down, we're forecast to cool off to about 64 degrees for a low, so that'll be a welcome change. Up on top of the rim at Clint's Well today, 86 is their forecast high with a mild 55 for their forecast low up there tonight. Well, that's quite a contrast from the deserts of Tano Basin where folks down there today, eh, they're still going to be heating up to around a high of 105 degrees. They're low tonight, only cooling off to a tempid 76 degrees. And all the way down in the Valley of the Sun at Sky Harbor International Airport, well, they'll be having a hot time down there today. Their forecast to once again warm all the way up to uh, 109 degrees for their high, and their low tonight only dropping to around 84. And that's what's happening around Rim Country. For Tano TV, KRIM Radio News, and Global Trails Media, I'm Randy Roberson. Make it a great Monday. We'll keep you informed on the fires and more.